with some academy the the fastest mig tech international school in kuala lumpur now this is part two of 2018 may june 2018 paper two paper two one we've uh, uploaded the part one without much ado let's uh, begin let's take a look at uh, part two of the question in part one, we looked at question one to question 15. In part two, we're going to start from question 16. Okay, in question 16, we'll be given, I think this part of, I don't know if Cambridge is still doing this, but we'll be given a shape and we'll be asked on the grid, draw the image of R, shape R, after the transformation, after the transformation represented by, the, by this matrix. So we'll be given matrix 0, minus 1, 1, 0. So these three marks. So the first thing we're going to do from the from the origin, you see this shape is a trapezium. This shape R is a trapezium. Every point, we're going to locate this shape, okay, on every point. We're going to locate every coordinate point. So what will we do? We just locate the coordinates in our board. We locate the coordinates in our board. So the first coordinate. Let's assume this one, A, B, C, D. So we give the coordinate of A is 1, negative 1, right? The coordinate of A is 1, negative 1. We give every point, every coordinate point, a letter. We call here A, we call this place B, we call here C, and we call here D. So every coordinate point. So we want to do it with like a different style. You're going to see the style we're going to use to do this. Coordinate is 1, negative 1. So we write the coordinate of A, coordinate of A, or the vector, vector, so to say. We write the vector of A, 1, we write 1, negative 1, 1, negative 1. Okay, we write that vector. Now we write for B, we write for B, we write for B, B what do we have? We have... If you start counting from the origin, one, two, three, four. Four on x axis and negative one on y axis, right? So four, negative one, right? So the coordinate, the vector of b is four, negative one. So we write that vector down, four, negative one. Four, negative one. Okay, we do for c, we do for C, the vector of C. We write it down. We get what? For C, we locate the vector of C. C is this point. So which means 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 for x axis and positive 1 on y axis. Right? 4, 1. 4, 1. So for C, we get 4, 1. 4 on x axis and one on y axis then the coordinate of d point d okay the coordinate will be the coordinate for point d will be let's take a look at this we have there here is d so on x axis is one two so two here y is one two one so the coordinate of d is two one so we write two one now what we're going to do because if you look at it if you look at the shape the matrix that was given to us is let's take a look at the matrix again the matrix is zero negative one one zero zero the matrix that was given to us is zero negative one one zero Okay, so this is the matrix that is given to us. So what it means is that this one, it's actually saying that we should, uh, it's, uh, it, it, this matrix means that we should uh, rotate 90 degree 
anti-clockwise. Rotate 90 degree. 1, 0, 1, uh, 0, negative 1, 1, 0. It means rotate 90 degree anti-clockwise. 90 degree anti-clockwise. And to do that, to do that, what you need to do is to find the A prime. We find another coordinate point for each of the of this vector, the A prime. We find the A prime, we find the B prime, we find the C prime, different coordinate points. Okay, we're going to find each of these coordinate points and then draw the new shape. And then draw the new shape. So we have C. And what we are going to do, it depends on what the matrix has said, the, uh, uh, dedicated us to do. So we have D, D prime, and then we get the coordinate point. So the coordinate point for A prime will be what? Since it's, uh, we're going to rotate 90 degree, we flip the vector. We're going to flip this vector, one and one, one and negative one. If you flip it, so negative one will be on top. Negative one will be on top, and one will be at the bottom. If you flip this, this uh, vector, the x, y, if you flip it, one will be one will be on negative one will be on top and one will be at the bottom so after that because this matrix they gave us this uh, matrix they gave us we have negative on the minus one is negative here so we go to add negative to the top if we add negative to the top what we will have if you multiply the top by negative what do we go to have it's going to become what it's going to become what? So if you add negative to this top, meaning multiply here by negative. If you multiply the top by negative, because of this negative one, they gave us in the matrix. Because of this negative one, we're going to multiply the top by negative. Okay, if you multiply the top by negative, so you have negative, negative. Negative, negative becomes what? One, one. Becomes what? One, one. This becomes the matrix. You know, you can put it in coordinate uh, form. Okay, apart from putting it in matrix, in coordinate it will be what one comma one so let me be writing the coordinate here one comma one this will be the coordinate of the matrix one comma one okay in matrix is one one like this in vertical in, mat in matrix we put it, we put them in vertical okay so that's that for the first one the second one you flip always flip because it's rotation you flip so it becomes minus one on top minus one and four at the bottom so you multiply the top by minus one if you multiply the top by minus one minus minus become plus so this will eventually become one four this will eventually become one four so one four or one comma four one comma four if you put it in the coordinate form if you put it in matrix form like this one on top and four at the bottom for y Okay, now the third one you also flip. This uh, C you flip. If you flip, become one four, one four like this, and then just add negative to the top. This one does not have negative before, so just add negative. It becomes uh, if this becomes the matrix, and if you want uh, or the vector, sorry, if you want to write the coordinate, it becomes one negative one, negative one comma four, negative one comma four. Okay. And then the last one you flip, it becomes one, two, and then you add negative at the top because minus one and two. Okay, the new coordinate will become what? Negative one, comma two. Negative one, comma two. This will be the new coordinate. Negative two, one, comma two. Okay, so this is our coordinates. This is our coordinate one, one. So we go to the board, we go to the question, and then we, we locate these points. We go to this place, one, one, coordinate one and one. Okay. Okay, so now let's begin to locate the coordinate uh, points. Okay, let's begin to locate the coordinate points. 
the first one is one one right one you trace from zero one and then one so we put a point here sorry uh, it's shake it's shake okay so we put a point here one one the second one was what what was our second value our second value is one four right one on x axis that's one four let's locate one four one four let's locate one four one and then four one two three four so this point will be here and then the next one is what what's the next coordinate our next coordinate is uh, negative one four negative one and then four right and next and then the next one negative uh, one two okay negative one four negative one two so we see our next coordinate is negative one is this way and therefore one two three four here negative one four we get the point here sorry this negative one four and then negative one two see negative one move here you move one times to the left the last point go to upward one two so the last point is here the last point is here okay so we join the la after that we join them we draw our shape Okay, you take your ruler, draw a line to this place, draw a line this way, and draw a line this way, and draw a line this way. You would have uh, seen the rotated value, okay? You would have seen the rotated value. Is that okay? So that's for this question. That's for this question. Now let's move on. <laughs> Is it uh, question 17? We have, uh, we can, let's sketch this one in our, just a sketch. We have 20 up, 10, 100, and 130. Okay. 20 up, 10, 100, and 120. So let's sketch this one as our question number 17. So we have, We have up to this level, we have 20, and then we have up to this way 100, and then here we have 130. So we break this one down. Here we have 10. We just sketch it, sketch it this. If we break this one down, here we have 100, here we have 130, and here we have 20. This is a speed time graph, so here is speed, here is time. Hopefully, yes, time is seconds. We check if the time is in seconds or in minutes. If it's in uh, this, then we know we'll be doing some conversion. Okay, let's see. The time, okay, this speed in me, uh, meter per second, and this is time in seconds. Okay, so let's read. We say the speed time graph shows information about the journey of a train between two stations. It shows information about the journey of a train between two stations. Calculate the distance between the two stations. Calculate the distance between the two stations. So, 
The distance in a speed time graph is the area under the graph. The distance in a speed time graph the distance in a speed time graph is the area under the graph. Area under the graph, meaning the area of this whole space. The area. So we break this graph into three. Okay, we break it into three. The first one, we call it, uh, we call the first one, we call the first one A. We call this one B. And we call this one C. So what we're going to do, we're going to find the area of this triangle, area of this rectangle, and area of this triangle, and then we add them together. So for A, for A, for A, area of triangle is half base times height. Half base times height. So half times the base times the height. We get the area of this triangle. So this will be equal to half times 10, because the base is 10 for the A. Half times 10, half times 10, times the height is 20. The height is 20. So we say half times 10 times 20. So this will be 100, because half of 20 is 10, 10 times 10 is 100. So this one, we just use the unit straight away. We say this will give us 100 meters. This is equal to 100 meters for the distance, for consider the first uh, part, this distance. Why is the base 10? Because here is 0, and we're starting from 0 to 10. This is the base for this triangle, and it's 10. And the height here is 20, because here is 20. Because here is 20. If you trace it, if you trace it, here is 20. If you trace it here, here is 20. Okay, so that's how we got that first part. Now let's calculate the space for B, the area of B. The rectangle, area of the rectangle. So the area of the rectangle is length times width. It's simply length times width. Let's change the color. Area of rectangle is length times times width. The length times the width. So what's the length of the rectangle? From 10 to 100 is 90. Don't write, don't write 100. Because 100 means you are starting from zero. So if you are moving from 10, this space we are covering here, here is what? 90. It's 90. It is worthy to note that. Because some people will just say, oh, the value is 100. Here they write this 100. If you write this 100, you're going to fail. Okay? And the height or the width is 20. 20. So you say 90. This is equal to 90 multiplied by 90 multiplied by 20. 90 multiplied by 20, which is equal to 1,800, uh, 1, which is equal to 1,800, right? 1,800 1, meter. 1,800 meter. Okay, we go to the third one, which is also a, the C part, which is also a triangle, right? And the area of a triangle is half base times height, half base times height. So this is equal to, this is equal to uh, half. The base is what? 30. Why is it 30? Because from 100 to 130 is 30. So here is 30. You can simply put the 30 here. So the distance from 100 to 130 is 30. So we multiply by 30. So I use dot times 30. Multiply by the height. The height is 20, right? Look at the height. From here to here is 20. So we say times 20. Times 20. So we can say half of 20. Half of 20 is 10. 10 times 30 is 300. So our answer here is 300. So the total distance traveled by, from the, or covered between the two train stations, or between the two towns, will be 300 plus 100, which is 400 plus 1,800. So distance is to sum up all of them. Distance is to add all of them together to get the distance traveled by the train. To get the distance traveled by the train. To get the distance traveled by the train. This is equal to 100 
plus 1,800 plus 300 plus 300 plus 300 so this gives us this gives us 2,200, right? This gives us 2,200 meter, which is 2.2 kilometer. 2,200 meter. That's it, that's the distance travel. So we come and we flee this 2,000. Then we Right, our 2,200 meter. 2,200 meter. And we get our three marks. Okay, the meter is already written. Just write the number on in your answer sheet. Just write 2,200. Is that okay? So that's it for question 70A. Question 70B is saying that we should calculate the average speed of the train for the whole journey. You know, average speed is total distance divided by total time taken. What's the total time? The total time is 130. The total time is what? 130. So we will simply divide the 2200, which is the total distance covered, we will divide it by the average, uh, by the total time taking. So speed, the B part of the question, 70B, we say speed, speed speed is equal to total distance. T distance, okay, T distance means total, okay, okay. Total distance over total time taking. Total distance over total time taking. So I write distance in, uh, for short. Total distance over the total time that it took the train to cover the whole distance. So that's the average speed. Okay, remember this is average speed, not just speed. Average. Average speed means all the distance you cover, the train cover, divide by. All the distance the train cover, divide by the total time it takes. So all the distance is 2,200. 2,200 divided by 130. Divide by 130. What do you get? 16.9, right? So we get 16. 16.9 seconds. Uh, sorry, meter per second. Go, we have calculated speed. 60 point average speed of the whole journey, 60.9 meter per second, right? 60.9 or 60.92 is still the same thing. So that's our speed. So that's what we got for this question. That's what we got for this question. And then we will uh, describe it here. We say here is 16 point 16.9. The meter per second is already written here. We already have the meter per second. So uh, we solve in our board, we write the only the final answer in the question paper. Is that okay? So let's move on. The next question, question 18, is to do what we call the, this is a cumulative frequency graph, okay? We have a cumulative frequency graph. We have cumulative frequency graph. The cumulative frequency diagram shows information about the time and minutes taken by more than 20 students to complete some homework. To complete some homework. 
The cumulative frequency diagram shows information about the time and minutes taken by 120 students to complete some homework. Okay, uh, we have okay, we have the total cumulative frequency to be 120, and then we have the time. Okay, it says use this uh, cumulative frequency diagram to find an estimate of the eta quarter range. Now, what is eta quarter range? Eta quarter range is the upper quarter minus the lower quarter. Okay. Semi eta quarter range is upper quarter minus lower quarter divided by two. Now, but they are not asking us for semi eta quarter range. They say eta quarter range. So let's first of all calculate the upper quarter. Let's calculate the up, upper quarter. So we we'll go to our board. We we'll say question 18. In order to find eta quarter range, you have to find the upper quarter. The upper quarter is called Q, Q3. Okay, so I just use the symbol upper quartile. Upper quartile which is Q3, is equal to 3 over 4 times the total cumulative frequency. Is equal to 3 over 4 multiplied by the total cumulative frequency. Our total cumulative frequency is uh, 120. Our total cumulative frequency is 120. So we say 3 over 4 times 120. This gives us 4 go here. This 4 go here, we get 1. 4 go here, we get, we get 30. So 30 times 3, we get 90. 30 times 3, we get 90. So here we have for the upper quarter, we get 90. Now we go to calculate the lower quarter. The lower quartile is called Q1. So you calculate the Q1. Q1 is 1 all over 4. 1 over 4 multiplied by the total cumulative frequency. 1 all over 4 multiplied by the total cumulative frequency, which is 1 all over 4 times 120. Okay, 4 goes into 120, we get 1. Uh, sorry, 4 goes into 120, we get 30. 30 times 1, we get 30. So here we have 30. Okay, we have 30. Now, okay, so in order to find the Takota range, we have to, we have to uh, take the upper quartile, go to the graph, trace it to the number of minutes it takes, and then take the lower quarter, it takes to the graph, take the number of minutes it takes, then we subtract the minutes from each other, and then we subtract the minutes from each other. Now let's take to the graph. The upper quarter is 90, and the lower quarter, the lower quarter is 30. Now let's do this. The upper quarter is 90, so you come here, trace 90, 90 is here, trace 90 here, you get to this graph, trace it down, you get 30. You get 30 minutes. So if you trace 90, you know 90 from the cumulative side, 90 is here, this place. 90 is at this point. This point. So you trace it, it where it touches the curve, this point. Where it touches the curve, and then trace it down, you get 30, 30 minutes. So we we write down 30 minutes for our Q1, uh, Q3. Then we say minus. Let's trace for our Q1. This is coming from our Q3. This is coming from our Q3. This is coming from our Q3. Okay, this is coming from our Q3. So our Q1 is 30, trace 30, 30 here, 30 here from the graph, trace it to this uh, curve on the graph and trace it down, you get 20. If you trace it down, you get 20. If you trace it down, you get 20. So you say minus 20. Your lower quartile, the answer you get in minutes is 20. So 30 minus 20, you get 10. So our final answer for this one will be 10. Because 30 minus, 30 minus 20, 30 minus 20 is 10.
30 minus 20 is 10 minutes. So this is 10 minutes. This is 10 minutes. So the Takota range is 10 because the Takota range is uh, upper quartile minus lower quartile. The minutes in upper quartile minus the minutes in the lower quartile. Okay? So before you can get the minutes in the upper quartile, you have to calculate the upper quartile where we get 90. We trace 90 to the curve, trace it down to the minutes axis or the x axis or the time axis. And then find the lower quarter, you get 30 for the lower quarter, trace it down, trace it, trace it to the curve and trace it down, you get 20. So you say 30 minus 20, you get 10. So 10 is our eta quarter range. Is that okay? Now you say the number of students who took more than 50 minutes to complete the homework. How many students took more than 50 minutes to complete their homework? So what we're going to do, you see this 50 minutes here? We're going to trace it to where it touched the curve. We're going to take it up. Number of students, because anybody above uh, 50 minutes to 60 minutes are the number of students. But we have to trace it to go and get the number of students on the cumulative frequency side. So I trace 50, we trace 50, we trace it to the curve. We begin to trace this 50 to the curve and see where it touches the curve. The 50 is touching the curve somewhere here. Sorry, a bit up. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere here. Okay, so it touches the curve somewhere here. Okay, so the 50 touches the curve somewhere here. And then we trace this one. Exactly two box. Right? Exactly two box. So we have to find the value of one box. So uh, 100 to 120 is 10 box, 10 small boxes. So each box is two, two right? So that's uh, four. Here we have 100, 110, 112, 114, 116, 118, 110, 112, 140. So this point is 140. Right? This point is 140. So 120 minus 140 is the number of students. That because they are the one above, the one above, this one above. They are the number of students. So 120 minus 140 will give us the number 140 or 160. 160, sorry. Because 160. So we, we have, here we have the number of students who complete homeworks more than 50 minutes will be our 120 minus 116 minus 116 minus 116 this will be equal to This will be equal to 4, right? This will be equal to 4. So our answer for this question is 4. 4 students uh, finish their homework above 50 minutes. 4 students finish their homework above uh, 50 minutes. Then let's see the next question. Uh, the next question is a calculate uh, angle LMN. Calculate angle LMN, okay? Okay, here we're going to use the cosine rule. We're going to use the cosine rule in trigonometry, okay, which we have looked at. So, so let's draw this one in our board and try to solve it. Let's draw this one in our board and try quickly to solve it. Question 19, right? Am I right? Question, question 19. Yep. So, Okay, so we have we have sixteen 
uh, 14, 16, and 19. L, M, L. 14, 16, and 19, right? Here we have 14. We have 16. And 19. Centimeter, right? All in centimeter, right? For this is still 19. All in centimeter. Now the question is that we should calculate angle what? You should calculate angle. All in centimeter. Then calculate angle L. Let's see what the what the angle is that they want us to find. Calculate angle L M N. We should find this angle L M N. That means the one in the center. Always the one in the center. That's angle M. This one. This angle. This is what they want us to find. We should call it theta. Call it theta. Okay, we call here small letter N. Just like you have A, B, C. You call here small letter. The one facing capital M. Call it small M. And the one facing big L, we call it small L. Small L, 16. Equals to 16. So, you remember, if you're looking for M, you say M square. M square is equal to L square plus N square minus 2 LN Ln cos in cosine root cos the big the big one you are looking for m the big m okay so this is the formula so we're going to make cos m the subject so to do that we bring the whole of this to the left we bring it to the left okay I quickly want to show you this okay we bring the whole of this one we take it to the left side. We take it to the left. So we, what we have on the left will be m square plus plus because the whole of that one will come to the left plus two l l n cos cos m cos m is equal to l square is equal to L square plus N square plus N square. So the next thing to do, we bring this M to go and join, the other square to go and join his brother. So we have here, what we have will be, what we have will be 2 L L N cos M cos M I'm just showing you how the formula is derived. I could have as well gone straight to the way we want to use it. Is equals to L square plus N square. You bring M square to the left, to the right, this one. Bring it here now. Say minus M square. But when you come here, it becomes negative minus M square. So what we do next is we divide both sides by, we divide both sides by, because we're looking for cos M. With the, or we are looking for angle M. So we divide both sides by 2 L M. So divide here by 2 L N. Also divide here by 2 L N. So this 2 L L N cancel this 2 L N. So what we have now, our new formula is cos M. Or you can write M equal to cos inverse. Okay, let's write the cos M. 
her formula now is cos m because that's the angle they ask you to find. The angle at m is equal to L square plus N square minus. It's not hard, okay? You can use ABC if you are familiar with ABC because when we are doing when you do in class, we use a and B, a, a, B, C. Maybe this L is strange to you. You can choose your letter. It doesn't matter. You can choose your letter and use. As long as you get the answer, nobody cares about what you assume during the process. Okay, so we get over 2 LN. So when we do this now, is to substitute. It's to substitute. So we can substitute our value. What is the value of L? If you go to the triangle, L is 16. So L is 16, uh, L, uh, M is 14, and N is 19. L is 16, so we say 16 squared. This becomes 16 squared plus N is what? 19, right? So plus 90 squared minus 40 squared all over all over two times two times sixteen two times sixteen times nineteen so what do we get next what do we get 60 square plus 90 square minus 40 square over 2 times 60 times 19. So at the end of the day, you're getting 0. what? Cos M would be 0. what? Okay, you want us to do it one after the other. Okay, over 2 times 60 times 90, what do you get? Six. So the everything you can key in your calculator. So let's be fast. You get 0. Point what? If you divide everything, what do you get? Because you get 4... 121 divided by 608. So here will be 421. 421 divided by 608. That's what you get. So when you do this, you get what? 0. Point what? 0. Point 0.692, right? 0. 0.692, that's what you get, right? Remember this cost, cost theta. This cos theta. Now to find it, cos m, okay, let's say cos m. Whether you use cos theta or cos m is the same thing. So to find m, angle m, the angle at the middle, angle m will be the cos inverse. Divide here by cos, divide here by cos. This here will be 1 all over cos. I've said this before. In EDCs, 1 all over cos is same as cos raised to power minus 1. In EDCs, 1 all over cos is same as cos raised to power 1. So we say cos inverse or inverse of the cosine. Cos inverse of 0 0.692. So cos inverse of 0 0.692, what do you get? You get an angle 40 something, right? What do we get as our angle, angle M? What do we get? 46.2 or 46.17, right? 46.2 approximately to one decimal place degree. So that's the angle for, that's the answer to this question. And uh, that's it for that, for that question. Now we move on quickly for the sake of time.
We write the angle 46.2 in our question paper. 46. Here, you write 46. Forty six point two point two degree. You get your four marks for doing this. Forty six point two degree. Now another question. A box contains three uh, three blue pen, four red pen, and eight green pen. So this one, what you just do, you write the green. Question number twenty. Okay, we have three blue pen, so you write blue. Blue, you write three. To ratio what's the next color three blue pen what which other color red is it red uh, we have three blue pen four red four and green eight okay red red pen we have four and ratio green which is eight okay we put the ratio now first of all we find sum of ratio sum sum of ratio for all the ball we get four plus three seven seven plus eight fifteen so sum of ratio is fifteen we write our fifteen now let's see what the question wants us to do what the question wants us to do is say another i say a pen is chosen at random from the box Find the probability that this pen is green. Find the probability that this pen is green. Okay, probability that is green is the number of green over the total. Probability that this pen is green is the number of green pen over the total. So, how many green pen do we have? We have eight green pen. So, probability green, so you say PR of green. Probability green, keep put green in bracket. Probability green is equals to number of green pens over the total pens we have in the box. Number of green pen, which is eight, over all the total pen we have in the box. Remember, the sum of uh, the answer to your probability question must be less than one. Because if you change this one to decimal, you get zero point something. Okay, zero point four something or zero point five. Okay, something like that. That's what you're going to get. So, probability answers are usually less than less than one. Okay. So we go here. We write our answer. We write our answer eight. over 15. Our, our answer 8 over 15. Okay, so we go to the next question. We go to the next question. It says, another box contains several black pen and 8 orange only. Okay, we go to our board. Black and orange. And orange. So number of black is is eight, right? Is it eight? Okay, seven black pen and eight orange, right? Okay, we have so some of some of the pen is still uh, fifteen. 7 plus 8 is 15. Sum is 15. Okay, now let's see what the question is going to ask us. It says, another box contains several black pens and 8 orange only. Two pens are chosen at random from this box without replacement. Calculate the probability that at least one orange, at least one orange is chosen. Okay, if probably that at least one orange is chosen, let's come here. The possibility that we will have you either you have you choose you have black black or when you choose you have the first one black the second one orange or you choose the first one is orange when you chose the first one you know you choose it twice every time first one is orange second one is black or when you choose both of them we are orange these are the possibilities you have in this your scenario. Now, they say probably that at least when you make, when you chose the two, 
what's the probability that at least one of them is, uh, is going to be orange? Probability would be, look, here you must find an orange. At least one of them is orange. Where you, any of these options, at least one of them will be orange pair. Orange, okay, at least one of these options is because there's orange here, there is orange here, there is orange here, there is orange here, there's orange here, there's orange here. Okay, so here, probability that at least one of them is orange, only here, only here we don't have orange, only here. Only here we don't have the orange. Only this one, only this one there is no orange. The question says find the probability, to so calculate the probability that at least one orange pen is chosen. So, uh, here would be, probability of the first one be black, times the probability of the second one be orange, plus probability of the first one being orange, uh, times the probability of the first one being, uh, the second one being black, plus then probability of the first one being orange, probability of the second choice being orange. So these are the, either we do like this or we say one minus, or we do, we can say one minus, probability of both of them be black. Okay, another way is to say, you know, if probability of success, if probability of success is 4 over 5, if they ask you what's the probability of failure, it's just 1 minus the uh, probability of success. So if probability of choosing both of them black negates the probability of either of them be, being uh, orange, so probability of at least one orange is 1 minus probability of both of them be black. Okay, I, I hope this makes sense. You can either do all of this one, we can try both options, or you just do the quick one, which means one minus, what's the probability of first one be black? The first choice is seven over 15. So we, seven over 15, the first choice be black is seven over 15. Probability of your second choice be black also will be six over 14, because you re without replacement, you took taking out one of the pen. You did it replace, it's now remaining 14. So probability of second one be black will be four, uh, six over, over 14. So when we do this, whatever we get, we say one minus whatever we get here, and then we will be able to get probability of at least one of them be orange. So but if you don't like this one, this one is faster way. If you don't like this way, you can begin to do each of these, each of these, and then you get the answer you are together. So here we can just simplify to make it easier for us, to make the problem easier for us. Seven into seven, you get one. 40 divided by seven, you get two. Three can go into this, you get two. Three can go into 15, you get five. So what we have in this uh, fraction, we have one time, in the numerator, you have one times two, which is two. And in the denominator, you have two times uh, 5 which is 10. So 2 over 10 is same as 1 over 5. So this we have 1 over 5 inside the fraction. So we'll now bring it to solve with the 1. We say 1 minus 1 over 5. 1 minus 1 over 5. Okay. So to do this, you meaning you do this over 1. So the denominator is 5. You can say, okay, you can multiply both sides by 5. Okay, so that you will not have, if you do that, if you multiply the first numerator, uh, the first uh, fraction by 5, you get 5 over 5. One actually means, one whole number actually means 5 over 5 if the contest of the denominator is 5. Minus 1 over 5. Minus 1 all over 5. So when you do this, you will simply get 4 over 5. You simply get 4 over 5. So this will be your final answer, 4 over 5. Okay, this will be your final answer, which we write. But if you don't want to do this, then it means you come here. Probability of first one be black. So meaning you follow B B B O O B O O. You do or you follow this track, this method, B O plus plus 
OB plus OO plus OO. Whichever way you do, you will get the same answer. How? I will just show. You finish it yourself. The first one be black is 7 over 15 times. The second one being orange will be second one being orange. How many orange we have? Eight. So we say eight over. The total is now what? 14. Total is 14. Total is now to 15. Then you close your bracket for this one. Then you do plus. This one is long. You have to do so many fractions. You do for this second one. Probably your first one be orange. 8 over 15. 8 over 15. Probability of second one be black. Second one. There are how many black? Several black. Over. Several over. Uh, the total is now 14. It's not 58 anymore. So you close the bracket. Plus. Plus the probability of first one be orange, which is still, uh, orange is 8, right? 8 over 15, multiplied by second one being, being uh, the second one being uh, orange, also, we've been, orange will no longer be 8, it will be 7, right? Because we remove the first orange, and second one being orange again will be 7 over 14. 7 over 14. So, you close the bracket for this also, and then you solve each of them, you still get the overall final answer for over five. Okay? Uh, if you have answer fractions that is not for over four in the uh, your uh, Cambridge, then you can break it down. You see it's the same for over five. Okay? So you can break it down. You see it's the same for over five if you reduce it to the lowest term. So here, we have 4 over 5. Either we write 4 over 5. 4 over 5. Or the bigger fraction is 168 over the bigger fraction, which is 168, if you don't break it down, over 210 over 210 210 okay so that's that for that now let's go to the next question question 21 Question 21 says, look at this is linear programming. We have linear programming. Now it says, uh, there are four inequalities that define the region R. One of these is y equal, is lesser than equal to x plus one. Y is less, which is this one. This one, y is lesser than equal to x plus one. This one. Okay, find the other three inequalities. Find the other three inequalities. Okay, I start with the easiest one, this one. This one. Why? This one is the, why is, here is one, here is 1.5. And since the space is above this line, that means what, this line is lesser, lesser than the space. So I'm going to say y is lesser than or equal to because it's a bold line. It's not a broken line or dashed line. For bold line, we're going to say lesser than or equal to. Because this line is lesser than this space. If this line was above this space, I would say y is greater than. If this line was above this unshaded region, I would say y is greater than or equal to. But since this line is below this uns uh, unshaded region, we'll say y. So our first inequality will be 
y y is lesser than or equal to why lesser than or equal to because it's a solid line lesser than or equal to 1.5 lesser than or equal to 1.5 is 1.5 actually look at it middle between midway between 1 and 2 so lesser than or equal to 1.5 that's the first inequality that's our first inequality that's the easiest of it all and then uh, Uh, for the other ones, we find the gradient of each line. For the other ones, we we'll find the gradient of each line. Then we substitute it to this equation. Y equal to mx plus c. We use this equation, y equal to mx plus c, to get the equation of each line. Y equal to mx plus c, to get the equation of each line. Okay? And the c, we don't have to bother to calculate. C is where the line touched the y-axis. For example, this line touched this place, so C will be 1. So the value here will be 1. That's why I knew this line. That's how we knew this line is for this equation that they give you. Out of the four equations, they give you one. They want us to find three. So this C is where the line touched the y-axis. Okay? This one now, this C is 0 because it touches the y-axis at 0, this one. Okay? This one, this C is 3. It's touching the y-axis, this broken line. It's touching the y-axis at 3. So we find for each line we want to do now, since it's not a horizontal or vertical line, for every slant line like this, we must slope, every slope, we must find the gradient. So let's find the gradient of this one, this line. So the gradient is the y2 minus y1. y2 is 3. So gradient for this line is... 3 minus for this line the highest point is 3 and the lowest point is 0 so 3 minus 0 over we trace we trace this one down the horizontal axis which is 4 4 minus 0 so over over 4 minus 0 over 4 minus 0 over 4 minus 0 over 4 minus 0 so the gradient m for this line this line m will be equal to what our m will be equal to 3 over 4 because 3 minus 0 is 3 4 minus 0 is what 4 minus 0 is uh, 4 so the gradient is simply 3 over 4 The gradient is simply 3 over 4. 3 over 4. The gradient is very necessary for us to get the equation. So if we need the gradient to be 3 over 4, then we can write the equation, right? Because we know we are touching there. So we say, and is, is going to be greater than or equal to. Because you can test, you can test the position of this of this one whether it's going to be greater or equal to. That will be another day. So we write y y will be greater than or equal to greater than or equal to three over four. We write the gradient three over four x. You know we are writing the equation three over three over four. x plus 0. Y plus 0 because c is 0. In place of c is 0 because this line is touchy, this place at 0. So c is 0. So no need to write plus 0. So this will be the inequality. So we write here y is greater than or equal to if we have time I will explain this one y is, great, y is it greater than or equal to greater than or equal to greater than or equal to 3 over 4 okay 
it's really really three over four x three over four x okay so this is the inequality for this one three over four x okay then the last one the last inequality is this one what's the gradient the gradient will be three minus zero over six minus zero no, zero minus six three over zero the gradient for this line this broken line you trace it to the vertical axis is three minus zero so let's find m here three minus zero three minus zero this one we're going to get a negative gradient 3 minus 0 because you can see it's sloping this way, this other side. 3 minus 0 over 0 minus 6. Why is it 0 minus 6? Because this is a y2 and also go to serve as x2 coordinate. So we say the x2 will be 0 minus 6, this 6. over 6 minus 6 okay so this will give us ultimately give us 3 over negative 6 3 over or minus 3 over 6 minus 3 over 6 is minus 1 over 2 minus 3 over 6 is reduced can be reduced to minus 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 so that's our gradient and if we know our gradient and if we know our gradient we simply say y y is lesser than not lesser than or equal to because it's a broken line negative 1 all over 2 negative 1 over 2 x plus 3 y plus 3 because the line touches the y-axis at 3. The line touches the y-axis at 3. So you say plus 3. Plus. Plus 3. Okay, so these are the inequality you need to put. And then you get your, your mass. Now we go to the this one. The. We got this one functions. Let's quickly look at the functions, and I think after function, we just have one more question, and then we are good to go. Okay, now let's take a look at function, and let's be fast about this one. f of x is five, five minus two x. f of x, question twenty one or twenty two, right? Question twenty two. f of x is equal to 5 minus 2x. g of x g of x is equal to s squared plus 8 g of x is equal to s square plus 8. Then let's see what they want us to do. They say we should calculate ff of negative 3. So the first one says calculate f f of s f of f of negative 3 so the first thing we do is to find the first thing to do we do is to find f of f of x 
So when they say f of f of, you're going to subtract, substitute f of x inside f of x. You're going to substitute f of x inside f of x. Meaning 5 minus 2x, you put it, you substitute it to replace the value of x. So I will write, let's find f of f of x first. f of f of x. Before we, we substitute with negative 3. So you put f of x inside f of x. So 5 minus 2x is the value. So we write 5 minus 2x. That's the value of f of x. We go to, in place of this x, we go to replace it with another 5 minus 2x. Because we put it f of x inside f of x. Okay? So here, we go to replace it with another value. So we have 5 minus 2. In place of this x, we put another 5 minus 2. 2x. We put another 5 5 minus 2x. In place of x, we put 5 minus 2x for this function. Function is pretty easy. Okay, then we expand with and simplify. So we have 5 minus 10, because 2 times 5 is 10. Negative 2 times 5 is negative 10. Then minus 2 times minus uh, 2x becomes plus 4x plus 4x. So 5 minus 10 is negative 5. Again, negative 5 plus, plus 4x. You can write 4x first, 4x plus, uh, 4x minus 5. You can do that. Doesn't matter. Now they say we should find f of f of minus 3. So here we're going to put negative 3 here in order to find, uh, reach our final destination. So minus 5 plus plus 4 multiplied by negative 3. 4 multiplied by negative 3. 4 multiplied by negative 3. We will get negative 5. Negative 5 plus... And 4 multiplied by negative 3 becomes negative 12. So plus minus become minus. This will give us negative 17. This will give us negative 17. Negative 5 plus minus become minus. So it becomes negative 17. So this one, we get negative 17. So we go to our paper. We scribe it there quickly. So here, we get a negative 17. Negative 17. OK? So we go to the next one. It's a find g2x. B, don't want to go 1. We find g find g 2x so we go to our board g 2x find g 2x let's work here g b roman figure one say find g 2x meaning g of s put 2x in the place of uh, x put 2x in the place of s in g of x so what it means you know, our g of x is s squared plus 8. Our g of x is x squared plus 8. What it means, anywhere you see x, put put 2x. Anywhere you see x, put what? Substitute it with 2x. So I'm going to put here, in place of x, I put 2x. Before I square it. In place of x, I put 2x. 2x. And then, as we square it, and then we say plus a. Then with the rest is just to simplify. The rest is for you to simplify. So 2 square is 4. S square is S square. So you get 4x square plus 8. That's all. They don't want you to do any other thing. They just want you to do this. So, so that's it. We write 4x square. We go to our question. 4x square plus 8. We describe the answer there. 4x square. 4 x square plus 8 plus 8 4 x square plus 8 okay we move to the next one the inverse of f of x find this one f raised to power minus 1 x means the, find the inverse of f of x so let's go find the inverse of our f of x. So 
Remember our f of x is uh, b roma figure 2, right? This is a, okay, this one was a, this one was a. Now let's find the b roma figure 2. b roma figure 2. That's the inverse, the inverse of f of x. The inverse of f of s f f raised to power minus one x the inverse of f of x. So to do that, you say let let this one equal to y. This f of x let it be equal to y. This inverse let it be equal to y. Okay. So let this f of s equal to y. So we say y equal to this. First of all, write it, f of x is 5 minus 2x. 5 minus 2x, right? We have no mistake 5 minus 2x, that's the f of x. To find inverse, the next thing to do, we say, let, let this one equal to y. We say, let this one equal to y. This f of x. So you write y here, equal to 5 minus 2x 5 minus 2x okay we move to the next step the next step is to est 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 extrapolate to exchange the position of x and y the next step is to exchange is to exchange the position of x and y so here i'll bring x here i'll exchange a position i'll bring y here i'll exchange exchange you know so meaning I come and write, I write x here, instead of writing y, I say equal to, I write rather the same, 5 minus 2, instead of say 5 minus 2x now, to be 5 minus 2y. So it's changing their position. So the, after that, make y the subject. Then after that, make y the subject. So after we exchange the position is to make y the subject of formula. To make the y subject of formula, bring 2 y here it becomes plus 2y you know it's negative on the on the right side comes to the left it becomes uh, positive and then this 5 is still on the right bring x here it becomes minus x bring x to the right it becomes bring x to the right it becomes a negative x and then the next to divide both sides by 2 so that we can find y so i divide here by 2 i divide here the whole of this by 2 so when we do that, these two cancel this uh, two. Y will be equal to five minus x, five minus x, all over two. And then remember, and uh, this one was, uh, we made the assumption to be y. So you say your final stage, f inverse of x, f inverse of x is equal to 5 minus x 5 minus x over 2 so this is the inverse function of f of x so we take this we put in our in our paper in our paper 5 minus x over 2 so we say this is 5 5 minus x five minus x over two. Over two. So we get our two marks. So we move on. The next question we're done with question twenty-two. Question twenty-three, forty people. We are asked how many times they visited the cinema in one month. The table shows the result, number of visits, number of cinema visits, and the frequency. Okay, zero five, zero five. We're going to draw the table in our board, so to make it easy. Question 23. Okay, we say, we draw a table.
So here I just put visit, visit, cinema visit, number of cinema visit, visit. Here we we'll go frequency, frequency. frequency okay so let's say zero five right zero five the next one next one is one five the next one is two six The next one is three six. The next one is four seven. The next one is five three. The next one is six six. The next one is seven two. Okay, so this is uh, what we have. Now let's see what the question says. We should do. Let's. The question says find the mode. The mode is one with the highest frequency, right? The one with the highest frequency is what? You can see the highest frequency is seven. So four is the mode. So mode is four. This one we don't have to go southwest. Okay, the one with the highest frequency is the mode. It's just four marks, one mark. The mode is there, the one with the highest frequency. So the mode is four, this four. Because it has the highest frequency. There's no frequency bigger than seven. We need distribution in the table. Okay, so the mode is there. Next, the next one is to calculate the mean. So we go to the board to calculate the mean. Calculate the mean of the distribution. Okay, to calculate the mean, what we have will be what? We have, we're going to say each of these, see 0 times 5 plus, we're going to like multiply and each column. Multiply each column and then we add to the next column. Meaning 0 times 5, we close the bracket. This 0 times 5, this one. We go, that's what we're going to be doing, each column. We're going to be doing column multiplication. Okay, plus plus like this and this we multiply this and this one times five plus one times five plus plus two times six two times six plus plus three times six Plus three times six plus four times seven. Four times seven plus five times three. Five times three plus. Plus six times six, six times six, plus plus seven times two. So these are sigma x, f of x. These are sigma f of x. Why is this, why is it called sigma f of x? Because this is our x this is our x and this is our frequency f so you get a new value f of x here on this table so you get a new data f f x here like each one you multiply here here is zero here is 5, here will be 12, here will be 
18. Here will be 28. Okay, what I'm going to do, I'm just multiplying this and this, this and this. Here's 15, here's 36, and here's 14. So, you find the total. You find the total of this one. That's what we're going to have here. That's called sigma f of x. So, we can say the total is sigma, sigma f of x. The total is sigma f of x over, remember mean is sigma f of x over sigma x. What's the frequency? The frequency is what? 40, they say 40 students, right? All together we have 40 students. So if you don't know, you can calculate the frequency from here. 5 plus 5, 10 plus 16, 22, 29, 32, 38, 40. So the total sigma f is 40. The total frequency is 40. So if we multiply this, what are we going to get? This is called over sigma f. Over sigma f, the total frequency. So the top, the numerator, what is the total? What do you get from the total? What will you get from the total? What will you get? 128, right? Yeah. So you say mean equal to sigma f of x over sigma f. Sigma f of x over sigma f. Sigma means summation, summation notation over sigma f. This is equal to 128. 128 over 40. Over 40. So 128 divided by 40, what will you get? 3.2, right? 3.2. So you get 3.2. So this is our mean. 3.2. So we go back to our paper. We write the mean. 3.2. So here is 3.2. Okay, so that's that for that. Now let's go to it. Say, Oman wants the B. Oman wants to show the information from the table in a bar chart. Calculate the sector angle for the people who visited the cinema five times. The sector angle for those who visited the cinema five times. Now let's take a look at the visit. How many people visited the cinema five times? The frequency is three, right? Five times, the frequency is three. So 3 over, what's the total frequency? 40, right? Times 360. We got par chart, all the angle is 360. So 3 visit, those who visit 5 times is 3. 3 over 40. 3 over 40. Multiplied by the angle of a, a circle, which is 360. Par chart is 360. If they say find the percentage, you say multiply by 100. Then they say par chart. So we go to do we go to do, we go to break this one zero cancel zero okay then four go here into thirty six nine nine times three twenty seven so our answer is twenty seven so you have twenty seven degree if you represented this in a bar chart this angle will be twenty seven degree that will represent those who visit five times. So 27. So we just go and write 27 in our paper. Right? We write 27 here. We write 27 here. Okay, that's it. Uh, the next one. I think this is the last question. The, le the last question. So Question 24, the last one. Let's uh, take.
take a look at it and let's see what they want us to find. Point A has a coordinate 1, 0, and point B has a coordinate 2, 5. So let's write this coordinate in our board. Question 24, point A has a coordinate 1, 0, 1, 0, and point B and B and B has a coordinate 2,5 and point B has a coordinate 2,5 so let's see what they want us to find 2,5 Okay, is it calculate the angle between between the line AB and the X axis? Oh, okay. Between the line AB and the X axis. Okay, we have to plot point A and plot point B. And then we on the something like a graph. So let's say this is our let's say this is our line graph. And and this is the other line. Okay. Okay. Let's assume there's negative. There are negative values. If there are, here is zero, right? Let's say here is one. Here will be two. Here's three. Here's four. Here's five. Okay. Okay, if there's negative here we have negative one, negative two if any, negative two, and so on and so forth. Okay. Is a point A is one comma zero, right? One for x axis, zero for y axis. So we put the point. Let's put the point here. One comma zero is this place where one is. That's where point A is. Point B is two comma five. Two trace it to five. Okay, already here, two to five. So we join the A. This is A. This is B. To form a right A triangle. This will be B. Point B. So if we join this line, these two points, you will see that we have a small triangle. We have a small triangle. Here. Okay, we have a small triangle. Here is an angle. They ask us to find. They say find the angle between line A, B, and the X axis. Remember, this is X axis. This X axis. But find the angle between the line A, B, and the X axis. Okay, if that is so, here is 5. If that is true, this place is 5, right? Vertical height is 5. And this place from 1 to 2 is 1. From 1 to 2, the distance from point 1 to point 2 is 1. So we have the vertical as we have the horizontal. So we can find this. Tan, this is opposite of our adjacent. So we can say tan theta, tan theta is equal to 5 over 1 is equal to 5 over 1. So theta is the tan inverse. Theta is the tan inverse of 5 over 1. Tan inverse of 5 over 1. 5 over 1 is the same as 5. So say tan inverse of 5. Tan inverse of 5. So when we say tan inverse of 5, when we press the tan inverse of 5, what do we get? 
78, right? Theta. The tiny inverse of 5. We'll get 78.7 approximately. 78.7. So we get 78.7. So that's what we get for the angle between x, the angle between this angle. Between the calculate the angle between the line A B and the X axis. So this one is 78.7. 78. .7. 78. 0.7. Remember in your exam, you must show your working. Remember in your exam, you must show your working. You must solve what we are doing on the board, you must do them here. Okay? Not only the answer. If you, nobody will give you three marks if you don't show all this working, this one. You must show all what we, all this one we are doing, you must show. Okay? In those spaces provided in the exam paper. Okay? Now let's go to the last question. The last, the B part of the question. The last but not the least for our today's class, our today's work, our today's video, will be, he said the line PQ has an equation, an equation y equal to 3x minus 8. The line PQ, the line PQ has an equation y equal to 3x minus 8, right? 3x minus 8. And a point and point P has a coordinate of 6, 0. So point P P has a coordinate of 6, 8, right? I check. 0. 6, 0. Okay, point P has a coordinate. Okay, 6, 10. 6, 10, okay? Say, so point P has a coordinate of 6, 10. Now find the equations of the line that passes through P and is perpendicular to PQ. Okay, equation that's perpendicular to this PQ. This is PQ, right? The, this equation, the line PQ has, yes, is PQ. So this equation is for PQ. So this is PQ. Okay, line PQ is this. Now, first of all, what is the gradient? We call it M1. The gradient of this line, M1, is equal to 3. The gradient, M1, is equal to what? Is equal to 3. You know, remember, equations of straight line are in this format. Y equal to MX plus C. Y equal to MX plus C. Equations of straight lines are in this format, y equal to mx plus C. This is the gradient. M is the gradient. M is the gradient. And C is the intercept on the y-axis, so which in this case is negative 8. Intercept where the line intercept the y-axis. So the gradient is 3. Now for perpendicular line, for parallel line, they have same gradient. For perpendicular lines, if lines are perpendicular, if lines are like this, perpendicular, okay, the gradient M1, the gradient M1 is equal to uh, negative 1 over M2. The gradient will be, M1 will be negative 1 over M2, meaning the gradient of the circle line will be 1 over what you got in M1, or M2 equals to, or M2, we can say M2 equal to equal to the negative we already got m1 negative one all over m1 the m1 we got was three so you just say one all over three so to get our m2 we say negative m2 is equal to equal to negative one all over three negative one all over three so we've got it the gradient since we've got it the gradient i will be giving a coordinate point p where it touches where the touches, let's say here is the P. Okay, this was the Q. Let's say this was the equation of the Q, the one they gave us, y equal to uh, 3x plus 8. Let's say this was this one, 3x minus 8. 
then we are looking for this one so we're going to find this equation so to find this we have to bring our p point p values or coordinates to bearing we have to bring this coordinate points to bearing so what we do what we need to do is to first of all find the value of c using this equation y equal to y equal to mx plus c if we bring it here we're going to substitute here and find our value of c where the second line touch the y-axis where the second line touch the y-axis in this case the, this coordinate point the y value is 10 so i put 10 here we're going to substitute the place of y we're going to substitute it with 10 so here we have 10 and which is equal to the gradient which is negative 1 all over 3 our m2 negative 1 all over 3 for the perpendicular line okay multiply by negative 1 over 3 multiply by the value of x what's the value of s in this case this is our x you know when you have a coordinate point the first value is x the second value is y so this is our x value we put it here 6 we multiply by 6 and then we say plus c remember we're looking for c so we're looking for c so here becomes uh, half 3 to this place 1 3 here 2 right so 2 times 1 we get 2 multiplied by 1 we get negative 2 or 2 multiplied by negative 1 is negative 2 so 10 equal to 10 equal to negative 2 negative 2 plus c so to make c the subject to make c the subject what we have will be we bring the c to this way so c will be 10 when it joins 10 it becomes plus c will be 10 plus 2 10 plus 2 10 plus 2 which is 12 so our c value is 12 now that our c value is 12 now that our c value is 12 what we need to do is to substitute our gradient you know the gradient we, we calculated the gradient we calculated this one uh, this y intercept and the gradient the gradient m2 for the perpendicular line we go to substitute them into equation of a straight line we get the equation of the perpendicular line so to get the equation of the perpendicular line to get the equation of the perpendicular line y equal to mx plus c y equal to mx plus c we go to substitute the value of the gradient and the value of the y intercept the value of the gradient and the value of the y intercept into this equation into this equation the value of the gradient and the value of the y intercept into this equation we why keep it the y and the x constant so y equal to what's our gradient negative 1 over 3 so we're going to substitute negative 1 over 3 for the gradient here you put the x the way it is is a variable we will leave the variable x and y then plus 12 remember we got the y intercept to be 12 okay in the first instance we only use them to calculate our c after using them to calculate our c you write our final equation we just put them to bear it. We don't uh, write the value of x and y. We just leave them as variables. Okay? We just leave them as variables. So this is the equation. Y equal to negative 1 over 3x plus 12. So that's what we need to write in our paper. After solving, we write the final answer in the space provided. This space is for solving. This space is for writing your final answer. Okay? Say so y equal to negative 1 over 3 negative 1 negative over 3 x plus 12 1 over 3 x plus 12 Plus 12. Okay, so that's it. That's it for our, our class for today. Thank you for joining with Summer Academy. Thank you.